So we're just going to go through a change in prices or start off with a change in prices. So let's imagine that a there's a rise in the price of wood, on, which is on the x-axis. This will decrease the affordable quantity of that good. That means we can buy less of it when we forego the same quantity on the y-axis than before. And this also increases the slope of the budget line. So from originally, the uh, piece of wood was $8, but now the the price of wood increased and it rises to sixteen dollars so at sixteen dollars the price pretty much just doubled and then uh, the amount we can buy now is halved with the same income because before with the same income we could only we could get five pieces of wood at eight dollars but now we can get only two and a half pieces of wood at sixteen dollars that is what i mean by the increase of the price of wood decreases the uh, affordable quantity that we can buy and it increases the slope of the budget line because if you try to find the slope of this $16 line compared to the $8 and the $4 uh, budget line then you will see that the $16 budget line has a, a greater slope. Now a change in income. A change in money income brings a parallel shift in the budget line not a rotation and the slope doesn't really change because the relative price doesn't change. So let's say that uh, our income originally was $40 and we could uh, buy either 10 t-shirts or uh, 5 wood or 10 t-shirts, 0 wood or 5 pieces of wood and 0 t-shirts. Uh, this income $40 line that I have here. If we have our income, we could buy half that amount. We could buy either five, five t-shirts and zero wood or 2.5 pieces of wood and zero t-shirts. And you can see that there is just a parallel shift and no rotation because the relative price doesn't change. So the slope doesn't change. Now an indifference curve is uh, a line showing a combination of goods among which a consumer is indifferent. So they feel the same. They don't feel like that anything changed uh, on on any point on the indifference curve. So at C, if we buy six t-shirts and two pieces of wood. Now we can sort all possible combos of, I'll, I'll talk more about this in a, in a bit, but we can sort all possible combos of goods into three groups. We can sort it into preferred, not preferred, or just as good as C. Now indifferent, an indifference curve joins all points that are just as good as C. So you can see that this dark green line I have here, that is an example of an indifference curve. So you can see that now I have this point G which was supposed to be this point. This is a point G and G is one such point which where we are indifferent between C and G. So uh, we're okay with the combination that is achieved with G uh, compared to C. They're completely the same. We're on the indifference curve, which means that we don't feel any different about uh, the combo of G than the combo of C. So uh, all points on the indifference curve are preferred to all points below the indifference curve because this gray area is not preferred and this yellow area is preferred. So the combos, uh, you could say that the combos in the gray area is not the best, are not the best combos we can achieve. The green uh, indifference curve are the best combos we can achieve and this yellow area is what we wish to achieve, you could say. So all points on the indifference curve are preferred to all points below the indifference curve, which is the gray area, and points above the indifference curve, the yellow area is preferred to all points that are actually on the indifference curve, which is the points on the green line. And to finish off, we're just going to talk about preference maps and marginal rate of substitution. So the preference map is basically a series of indifference curves. So you can see here that I have three indifference curves, I2, I1, and I0. And um, you, just, you can just call the indifference curve that we just made here I1. And I0 is uh, the curve, the indifference curve below I1. Uh, we prefer any point on I1 to any point on I0 because if you take this line as before as this graph then this I0 line is in the gray area of course we would prefer 
the dark uh, green green line than the, over the the light light blue line. Uh, now I two that is an indifference curve above I one, and similarly, we prefer any point on I two to any point on I one because. Uh, essentially, I2 is in the yellow preferred area that we wish to achieve. Uh, so, and that yellow area is, uh, uh, any point on that yellow area is preferred to any point at, that are actually on the green indifference curve. So I2, any point on I2 is preferred to any point on I, on I1. So, for example, J is preferred to either C or G. Now, the marginal rate of substitution, it measures the rate at which a person is willing to give up good y to get one more good x while remaining indifferent. That means they are on the same indifference curve. And the magnitude of the slope of the indifference curve measures the marginal rate of substitution. Uh, two things you gotta know that are pretty important is if the indifference curve is steep, then the marginal rate of substitution is high, and that only means that the person is willing to give up a large quantity of y just to get a little bit more of x. Now, if the indifference curve is flat, then the MRS, in this case, is, slow, is a low, and that only means that the person is willing to give up a small quantity of y to get more of x. And we will talk more about marginal rate of substitution in the next video, probably, but I just want to quickly hurry and finish off the diminishing marginal rate of substitution. Now, a diminishing marginal rate of substitution is the key assumption in consumer theory, and uh, the definition for it is just that uh, diminishing marginal rate of substitution is a general tendency for one to want to give up less of a good Y to get one more unit of good X while remaining indifferent as the quantity of good X increases. So, for example, when you bought, have when you buy a certain video game, you already have that video game. You wouldn't want to, you would want to give up less of your cash for that same video game because you already have it. So uh, that's pretty much a good briefing on diminishing marginal rate of substitution. But again, I'll go through that with you guys in more detail in the coming videos. Uh, I think that's where I'll leave you off. I'll, Hope you enjoyed this video. Please rate, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. And check out our social media feed in the description box below. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.